Good evening, everyone. It's February 6th, and this week on the Team Arrivals podcast is the first of two bonus episodes. Tonight is a Cubs-only hour. Pete and Elliot will be giving their predictions, answering questions, talking about their Cubbies as they start making their way south to Arizona for the start of spring training. I'm willing to bet we're going to be talking a little bit about Major League Baseball, ownership groups, and agents, players, the slow margin. All that begins right now. Smith corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. There's a drive. Way back. It might be. It's When yeah. I drive in the left, back towards the crane. He's at the track. He has it. He's a part of the world champion for 2011. A little bouncer slowly toward right. He will run it to Rizzo. It's in time. And the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. This is the Team of Rivals podcast. No insiders. No anonymous sources. Just passionate analysis from the bleacher seats. Here are your hosts, Ron Nuttall and Peter Geddes. All right, boys, let's get this thing started. Wow, you're not even gonna, those are my favorite. Bonus. You're not even going to do an intro, huh? You're just going to just know, let's get this intro, thing started. man. I pre-recorded the intro. You heard it. <laughs> you pre-recorded <laughs> that? I, I honestly thought you did that live. That's why you turned off the camera. That was impressive. Just did that last time. You knew I didn't do it. That was impressive. Well done. Good hey, evening, so before, we get, into, anyway, before anyway. we get into it, everything <laughs> Team Arrivals podcast uh, focused, you can find it online at teamarrivalspodcast.com. There you'll find a repository of all our latest videos, links to all of the uh, various social media, and uh, you'll find uh, links to our various podcast streams as well, so you can download or stream our dulcet tones anytime of the week when you need to get your baseball fix. All right, Ron. That's right. And uh, I wish the Team Arrivals had an answer or a, a suppository for the slow uh, free agency market that was happening, but guys, we're gonna we're gonna store that to the end if we have time to even discuss it. Did you guys see a couple of the pieces of information that went out today, though? Just a couple of Scott Boris is talking again, and we're supposed. <laughs> damn it, we're, we're supposed to have wait, some wait, kind wait. of special does, does tone. He, does he ever not stop talking? He always has something <laughs> um, to say. If there's a camera, no, he's he putting his face in it. If there's a mic, he's putting his mouth on it. Yeah, That's I was right. just going to make it. that joke. Do you know where the most dangerous place in the world is? Between Scott Boris and a camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's not untrue. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so let's let's get into that later, though, because we've beat that to death, right? Every Us and every other baseball podcast have done nothing but talk about the slow market. And quite frankly, guys, it's I'm bored of it. I don't know about you. I, I'm bored. So here's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, I'm actually excited to do this because um, we didn't do this last year. Well, we did it in a way, Pete, but we didn't dedicate a couple episodes to this. No, we didn't. And so we are going to focus solely on the Cubs tonight. I couldn't. You know why we Cubs. didn't? You know why we didn't do this last year? Because there was actually something to talk about. <laughs> Holy crap! It, right? I mean, it, you're right. I mean, uh, yeah. This this wouldn't have uh, probably crossed my mind last year because most things were settled. But I am excited to do this. We're going to do a. Uh, this next hour is only going to be Cubs. You guys are going to be, I've got a list of questions here I want to ask you guys, and I want to know what you think, you know, and you can elaborate as much as you want to. You can be as short as you want. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing the same thing on Friday night. It'll be a Cardinals only episode. I'm really excited about that one too, because we have Chris Lawless from uh, Cardinals Nation 24-7. Fantastic Facebook page. If you're a Cardinals fan, you like to follow him. Um, that guy, I don't know how he does it. And I don't know how he keeps up with it, but a ton of information on there daily. Huge following, but uh, a really great guy, and I'm looking forward to talking to him on Friday, but he'll be joining us. But, guys, it's all Cubs tonight. Um, I've got more Cubs in the background. I have this thing in my house, in my house, uh, <laughs> amazingly. That's not in your house. That's in the garage. That no, 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 no. I am in the house right now. I'm in the house. It's two. It's like 47 degrees out there, and I can't take it. Not doing it. So I'm, 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 I'm indoors. I'm domesticated tonight, and I'm in here, and we're gonna we're gonna do this. All right, All right. guys, I'm just, I'm gonna launch right into it. Okay, 
Oh, so, sounds good. Slow market, slow market aside, we're going to pretend for just a moment that this the slow market thing doesn't exist. Are you guys satisfied with the with the moves the Cubs have made so far this offseason? Go ahead, Elliot. Uh, yeah, I, I am. Um, I, you know, we're, we're headed in. We are a week away from spring training, and I'm happy where we're at. Would I have liked to have seen you or somebody else come back and, and sign? Uh, sure. But I feel pretty comfortable. I, I think the starting pitching's in a good place. At least I'm pretty sure Mike Montgomery is got, still has his fingers crossed that he's going to be a starting pitcher this year. Um, the the bullpen signings have been solid. Um, I think we've really solidified the bullpen uh, this off season. And as long as our regular everyday core. Um, plays like they should and other players who haven't played like they should start to start to play like they should. I think, I think we're in good shape. Um, I'm excited for next week. I'm excited to start uh, seeing some of these guys throw the ball out on those green fields. And uh, in the next couple weeks, I'm excited to hear some uh, balls cracking those bats. So I mean, that's kind of my short answer. <laughs> yeah, Ron, you and I both had the same reaction. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Peace, children. I want to hear what you. I'll repeat the question. Are, are you guys satisfied with the what, slow market aside? No, we all know what's happening. Are you satisfied or how satisfied are you with the moves they've made up to this point? Well, the way that you put it initially yeah. actually kind of gives me um, an opening to answer this quite honestly. <laughs> Uh, and that yep. was, are you satisfied with what the Cubs have done so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they have done so far, I am satisfied. I think that the bullpen has gone from a liability to, at mm -hmm. worst, a neutral situation. Um, neutral to last year? Yeah, compared to last year. Um, okay. it, it, it shapes up to even potentially be a strength. Um, but that's based entirely on the players. The one thing that we don't know and, and the thing that, you know, now <clears> – <throat> last couple of years has made me nervous is we don't know how well Joe Madden is going to handle that bullpen. He, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Um, but that's to this point. Uh, if we were, if the season was starting now, would I be satisfied with the moves they made? No, they still need another starting pitcher. Well, I got a question I think, about that in a second. I, I think, think the to... composition is, is um, eminently fragile if mm -hmm. they don't add another starting pitcher, because then Mike Montgomery has to slot into the rotation and that bullpen suddenly gets a heck of a lot weaker. Okay. So, um, because, uh, Elliot, you mentioned you and you weren't talking to me. You were talking about you Darvish, right? <laughs> I know it's confusing. Um, we should just really call the guy by his last name. Um, but so Jake Arrieta, if the market bottoms out, would you guys welcome his return versus paying a ton for you, Darvish. Now it's all relative to what he would want. But let's just say Jake was going to like, all right, I'm going to wait it out till next year. I'm going to do a pillow contract. How would you guys feel about that versus not getting Darvish right now and paying a ton for him? I'd rather have Alex Cobb than than Jake. I think that there's a reason that the Cubs haven't prioritized re-signing Jake Arrieta. Um, and I think that, that it's a combination of analytics and also their own intimate knowledge, having worked with him for the last several years. I think that they know that there's something there and they are selling high. Yeah. I mean, okay. you've seen the the numbers go in the wrong direction with him the last couple of years. I mean, it, and it's kind of spiked uh, from being the, one of the best pitchers in the national league in 2015 and coming back to the mean in 2016. And, you know, you know what you're going to get with him, though, and that's the only thing that kind of gives me pause is you know what you would get with Jake Arrieta um, for, the, for the most part. Um, I don't know enough about Alex Cobb to say, yeah, he's the, he's the guy that I would rather sign. I would probably more I'm, – I'm more like the person was, I know what we're going to get with Jake, and I would be okay if they were to sign him to a pillow contract. My problem is is the 
is the investment that it's going to cost you. And the last thing that I think that they want to do is go back out into the market next year looking for pitching when they're already obviously targeting some major expenditures next year. It would certainly appear yeah. that they are saving their bullets this year to go and get, I mean, because if they weren't right, why not, you know, why not go all in and just try to sign Darvish and Arietta? Let's load up that, that rotation, but they didn't. They took a different approach. They signed Tyler Chatwood and then they signed Drew Smiley to essentially a futures contract. Um, they're clearly saving their monetary bullets for next off season. So I go into it, not only trying to land a difference maker of an outfielder, but then also having to find another piece to the rotation. Uh, look, Clayton Kershaw is not going to make it to the market. The Dodgers are going to work it out with him and they're going to extend him. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to go into next year's market um, not only looking to round things out from a position standpoint, but knowing that if you don't land um, uh, if you don't land Bryce Harper, you're still in good shape. But then also having to look for a starting pitcher, that's that's going to be a tough ask, I think, next year. So I would much rather settle the rotation you know, situation for the next couple of years in this offseason when the Cubs really are the big dog. The, the uh, Yankees and the Dodgers, for all intents and purposes, are out of this market. Um, the Phillies aren't there yet. And, you know, when you look at the other big market teams who you would think would compete with the Cubs on free agents, they're just not participating this offseason. Um, so take advantage of that situation. Uh, use your leverage to get some really team friendly contracts signed <laughs> and set yourself up for the future. Yeah. So just uh, my take on both of these questions, if you want to hear Cardinals fans say, kind of looking at this from the outside. Not really. I know you don't, but I'm going <laughs> to offer it up anyway. I, I have the control switch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm 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 thrilled with the moves the Cubs have made so far, and I I think they should stay on Pat and not do anything else for like another year. Um, kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, no. If, if if I'm the Cubs and 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 um, this thing with Darvish drags on and on and on, I would probably be okay with uh, bringing Area back, even uh, Arietta back on a short term. Um, and and we we call it a pillow contract. Fine. Um, even if it's a, a short-term deal, I welcome that back as a St. Louis fan, probably would with Lance Lynn. Now, Pete, you, you made a very good point. Well, the Cubs know him the best, right? Even advanced analytics to the rest of the league, um, everybody's got a view of him, but the Cubs know him best, and they and they haven't um, really extended anything to uh, any type of offer or any dialogue whatsoever to bring him back. And the Cardinals no, have really – have they okay? So, so yeah, they've, left, they've left somewhat I think of a door open. Elliot, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what I heard was four years, a yeah. hundred million. <clears throat> yep, is that right? Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I heard. Yeah. Okay, so so they've extended it, but I think that he's their third option. Okay, um, well, the, the Cardinals, as far as I know, the Cardinals really I, I haven't heard the same thing on Lance Lynn. Um, but to your point you made earlier about you know, the Cubs know him the best, and obviously they know something's off, um, <laughs> or something's trending in the wrong direction where they don't want to make a long-term commitment. And the Cardinals have essentially done the same thing for Lance Lynn. So you can definitely relate to that. But on a short term for another year or two, um, um, fire the Cubs and the Darvish thing just doesn't work itself out. I don't hesitate at all bringing him in. Now the question is, will he do that or not? not prob maybe not, um, but we'll see. We're so close now that uh, you, you this this game of uh, chicken has got to go one way or the other. So Who's more likely to... to hold out and and not sign with the team out of panic jake arietta or jd martinez i think jake arietta probably since since his personality is so glowing and um <laughs> that he shows so much emotion he I was, is, I was he is a, he, he's hiding his ears because he, damn guy's a vulcan <clears throat> and he's gonna hold I, I put my money on jake arietta holding out longer than martinez i agree <laughs> I agree 100%. Because of my logic? <laughs> get it? Jesus. Yes, I did get it. What's right, the next ne question? Uh, next question. Right. Next question. <laughs> All right, do you have another comment on that, Elliot? I don't want to cut you off. No, I, I was pretty sure we were going to hear flat billed pissy pants there. Pissy pants? But, uh, flat billed pissy yeah, pants? I'm glad. I'm, I'm the thing is, guys, I, I had that. to seriously like I've, I had moments when those rumors were swirling around that St. Louis was showing interest. I'm like, what am I going to do now? I've dogged this guy <laughs> for a year. 
Hey, Elliot, if he does sign with the Cardinals, you and I are going <laughs> in and we're buying Ron an Arietta jersey. A Cardinals <laughs> area. Just uh, you know what? If he somehow ends up with the Cardinals, I will I will wear a flat bill cardinal hat for one episode of this. <laughs> Only one episode. Only one episode. I would it. love to see. I can't. That. It's almost like I, it, I'd be surprised if I even make it because my instinct is to bend the thing like normal people do. But um, anyway, uh, next Maybe question. Oh, oh, wouldn't that be great? The the game that we're gonna get together at um, at Wrigley for if Arietta starts for the Cardinals and Ron, you have <laughs> to wear a flat bill hat into the stands. Oh no 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 no! Oh yes 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 yes. Flat bill Cardinals nope. hat. Nope. I'll grow my beard out, but I won't. I won't wear a flat bill. <laughs> All right, next. I, I've, I've already screwed around in the bleachers there before, and I got threatened one time. Um, I think about it. You were with me. Might have been I you. Was. Um, it was my fault. It's all <laughs> my no fault. doubt. It was your fault. Um, <laughs> so, guys, right now, if you were the GM, you only have one move you can make until you head into the year. What is that one move? What do you do? Just one. Well, I give Theo a reach around, obviously. <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> you said I, I was I, the GM, I, so I, I'm Jed. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it goes the other way around. Um, really? You think, maybe. You think Jed's the top? I, you got to wonder about these things, man. Theo's... <laughs> Theo's He's a good looking guy. He's manicured and everything. Jed looks a little more rough. So I'm just saying. Outsider perspective. No. I stand. This is not a kid show. (laughs) This is not a kid show. Jesus. Um, anyway, my question was Braden, stop watching. (laughs) I hope he's not. (laughs) Damn, it'll show up in the comments too. He doesn't know what that means. Um (laughs) one more move. You have one more move. Baseball transaction, Pete. Baseball okay. transaction to make. What is it? Oh, I signed you, Darvish. Elliot, that was boring, by the way. Elliot, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what you do. You guys suck. Get oh, it done. Cool. cool. Okay. okay. Great. I, I mean, trade. That's, I, that's, I that's trade the move we've entire, all been waiting for. I trade my entire catching core for the greatest catcher of all time. Pudge Rodriguez. Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. He still got something left in the tank, man. I bet he and, does. And Palmero. If Palmero's got something, Johnny Bench has more. Of course, you're talking yeah, about no. Molina. No, yes. You're talking about a 24 year old Yadier Molina, not not the current. No one. current. Oh, current. You, you gave me one baseball move. I'm going to solidify my my uh, my team. He's the greatest ever. Just ask him. <laughs> I hope somebody <laughs> doesn't know you're joking and just flames you. Tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, those rant. Come come at me, bro. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, what other what other move? Just seriously, becomes, what other move? You had one. What what Darvish. other move? Are we talking a realistic move or just realistic, any move? One more realistic move. No, not one more Fantasia move. Where you you know? I can't trade Jason Hayward for Bryce Harper. No, straight up. Straight unless, up. No, no. Unless you're playing MLB the Show <laughs> and no, no, no. Turn off trades. No, no, no. You, you trade. Hayward for Bryce Harper and immediately sign Harper to a 10 year, $200 million. Well, yeah, I mean, that was, but that's, that's, what you, that's a second move. <laughs> I was just talking and, and about the my Nationals first take move. on 100% of Hayward's contract. That's right. right. Okay. 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 okay here we go. Maybe this will get through MLB the show's trade filters. I would trade Jason Hayward and Ben Zobrist and Albert Elmore Jr. for Bryce Harper. No way in hell. <laughs> what he his contract's expiring the nationals aren't going to be any good this year <laughs> oh, man. We'll put you're putting a target on yourself all right uh i, I got to move on to the next question elliot what you said darvish right that was your move yeah i mean okay. i mean that's you get it you get it done you don't you don't do anything outrageous than you know than what you're doing right now you have the best offer in there okay i mean that's so i'm gonna that's what, that's what everybody's saying. So you just kind of you hang tight, you get it done. Yep. So I'm going to pivot now to official spring training. So guys, uh, who will surprise in spring training for the Cubs? Out of, out of all, all all the players, you know, they're reporting to big league camp. Are we talking about any player or the who we think yeah. is going to make the major league roster? Any player. 
Ed Bieber Ellsley. The big... Who? Ed Bieber Ellsley. Okay. Yeah, that's actually who team. I'm excited to see. Yeah, he made it up to double A. It was double A last year, right? He finished. Yeah, finished in double yeah, A last year. Double A. Um, he's the seems to be kind of the consensus <laughs> highest pick, and eyes are. He's finally going to have eyes on him, so I think that. Um, yeah. I think he's going to be the one who's going to impress the most. Just to say somebody different, I, I, I'm looking forward to more Car- uh, Caratini. Uh, I really like that guy. I think he can be great. Like um, I, I'd like to see. I'd like to see him get some more at bats. Um, I, I just he's a solid ball player to me. Um, he reminds me a lot of watching Contreras when Contreras first came up. Um, it's just. I, I always had a, 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 an infinity to be excited for catchers or just watch catchers. So, I mean, I, I, they're, I think they have one of the most important positions on the baseball team. So I, I'm excited for that guy to, to come up and, and rake. All right. So um, which Cubs player needs to show the most in spring training? Like who has the most to prove? Who's on the bubble? What's that one player that really needs to perform well? Oh, you go first, Elliot, because I'm there are two, and I'll just go with the opposite. Yeah, you don't have to limit it to one. I, I, no, player I know. Or players, like who do you think? Who do you think has Jason, the most to prove? Jason Hayward, definitely. He's had the most to prove the last two years. Um, we all know he can play the field. That's that's we all know we all know what we're talking about, and he needs to do something at the plate. Uh, I would love to see him come out of spring training and. Hitting 285 to 75, I, I, I would just like to see some good at bats, not rolling over to the second baseman, uh, not popping up to the second baseman. I'd like to see him hitting it into the center center field, uh, Oppo. Um, just just more of what he was doing a few years ago than what he has been doing for the last two seasons. Um, and hopefully Chili Davis uh, can get through to him mentally, and hopefully that's just the barrier that he's just been missing, and <clears throat> he can come in and have a great February and March and hit the ground running and just do what he had been doing since up until 2015. That, that That's what I'm looking for. That's the guy who needs – to kind of prove themselves this spring. Pete? Uh, one of two. Uh, Hayward's one of them, obviously, but since Elliot expounded um, so well, I'd say it's Kyle Schwarber. He's got a lot to prove. He came in last year with everybody, you know, kind of thinking he was God. Um, and I think that people are selling him short. And so I think that he's he's going to come in with a vengeance. And this has nothing to do with his physical transform, transformation. I think it has to do with his mental attitude. Um, I think that he's probably not uh, used to this uh, this current situation where people question his ability. Uh and, and people have kind of always bought Kyle Schwarber. And I think that people aren't buying him right now. And so I think that he's going to come in with a chip on the shoulder. I would um, – um, I know you don't want a Cardinals fan perspective on this. That's fine. I'm going to give it anyway. <laughs> um, I, I would say uh, Hayward kind of, but what are they going to do with him, guys? It's not like they can not invite – it's not like he's not going to make his way north when spring training ends. I get that we want to see – a lot from him, but my first person I look at is really Schwarber. Um, all this transformation, this you know, this new body he has. How is that going to translate over this year to his performance? I, if I'm a Cub fan, I'm like, I'm looking at that, going, okay, that's going to be our left fielder. Looks great. He's worked his ass off because he didn't like he didn't like what happened last year, but. Is that going to translate into uh, the left fielder that we need? I won't get into the leadoff hitter spot because that's a question I have for you guys later. But um, you know, th- that's that's the guy I'm looking at. And I, uh, Pete, I'm not I'm not uh, sure this. I, I don't know the name of this other guy you mentioned earlier, but um, I think for me it was uh, it was really it came down to one guy, and that was Schwarber, because that will really create. Um, 
see, I'm already, I'm, I'm jumping ahead to what, what we're the conversation we're going to get into a little bit later when I've, I'll throw that question at you guys. But, um, for me, just looking from the outside, I would say like he would be the biggest one. I, I would guess from from what you would predict that you want in your starting lineup. That's that's the one I, I would have the most uh, concern over. There's really not a lot you can do about Hayward. He's gonna no, he's we, gonna he's gonna be on your team, right? As we discussed last week, that's a sunk cost. You yeah, know, the, the money there is it, it's already lost. You know, unless he he right. produces what is it five more years of 2012 level production, which he's not going to do. You've lost money on that contract. And so you just have to eat it for as long as you can until you can spin it off to some other sucker. Yes. Um, all right. So uh, another question I have for you guys. Uh, spring. Tra- <laughs> this is this is one for kind of all of us here. Uh, Before you jump into it, and actually yeah. it's kind of a funny thing because one of the potential ways that they solve that problem actually is if they sign Bryce Harper. Because you're not going to have Bryce Harper play center. You're going to move him into right. And right. Hayward's bat, the way it's been performing – in center field is not nearly as much of a liability as it is in right. I uh, totally agree because you need more from your bat in right field. Now, yeah. keep in mind, guys, there, there was a point in time in, in Major League Baseball where you didn't need much out of your shortstop. And then all of a sudden, guys showed up like Rodriguez and and uh, Garcia Parra and Cal Jeter Jr. and Tula Witzke. Mm-hmm. Come on, right, give, Cal give, Cal, Jr. give Cal the credit. He's uh, the no, one I will. I will. I will. Um, but there was a time when when not much was expected from shortstops either. When all of a sudden guys like that show up, though, then um, where where can you give a little bit then, right? Uh, right? Can you give a little bit to you know a corner outfield spot that's traditionally you kind of you kind of hide a, a bad defender, right? Mm-hmm. What, a guy that's not not he's not good enough to play center field. Hiding one of the corner outfield spots, he's in right field. Mm-hmm. You gotta have a little bit stronger arm. We know that, but um, I agree with you though, Pete. They they have enough in their lineup. They they have enough sticks in their lineup where they can hide Hayward, right? They don't need him to perform in some core position in that everyday lineup that's going to matter one way or the other. What they get from him eventually is going to be like, oh, um, if we can get anything from him from the plate, that's a bonus or that's a bonus year. My son's calling me. He knows I'm recording right now. He knows it. Because he wants to know what a reach round is, Dad. All right. Hold on. It'd be great if we could hear him. Dad! Oh! You can. Oh, my God. Oh, it's not on the Cardinals anymore. (laughs) 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 I'm so happy. (laughs) The two times... Braden, by the way, we're recording live right now. Yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, you're watching. And And we can actually hear you. And they can hear you. You can't hear them, but they can hear you. They're talking to you. You remember the last time? Last time I, I doubted him, and he talked about oh, remember he was like the first uh-huh. line was I hate Shung Wong Oh, yes, I know he signed with the Rangers. You just you just read that. Oh my god, I'm so excited! I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, Braden's <laughs> least favorite Cardinal ever. Um, all right, yes, I I should have I should have called you earlier today. Oh my god, yes, we could have celebrated. The, the Rangers are screwed. <laughs> I can't wait to hear them not playing walk off against them. Yeah, well, did they play the Rangers this year? I don't know. Hopefully. Okay. Well, there it's you a guaranteed go. Guaranteed win. That's that <laughs> is some uh, p- passionate take there on the uh, on the topic of uh, of the Cardinals' former um, stopgap closer, and that was uh, Sung Wong Oh. Who's no longer with them? He signs with the Rangers, which uh, he had a great 16, I think, because nobody knew him. And everybody figured him out real quick, and he had a terrible 17. He had a career year. Yeah. <laughs> he had a career one year. Yeah, well, um, no, I mean, that's what a career year is. It's your, the best year. <laughs> no, but literally, like, he literally had one year. And, yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then he returned to the pitcher that he was. Yeah. Oh, reality. Like, it's one of those things, right? Yep. Like you make a couple half court shots, and all of a sudden your coach goes, "Yeah, you can't do a third one," and then 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 you can't, and then it's like, "Oh, reality, <laughs> get back, get back inside." Um, B, we got to keep recording here, buddy. We got to keep rolling. All right, oh, I'll, I'll keep watching. You keep watching. You call back if you've got another hot take. Oh my god, <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. My day got so much better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This is this this uh, this could very well end up being the best segment tonight. <laughs> so. To wrap up the whole Jason Hayward point. All right. Like, B, if, B, if you got another hot take later on a question, call back. All right. 
Okay. All right. Love you, bud. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I, I should have known that he would have only dialed in knowing we were recording live because yeah. he wanted to, he wanted to talk about oh well, not being with the Cardinals again. Well, he can call so, in on Friday. I've never seen that kid so <laughs> passionate. Right. Um, By the way, the Cardinals right. do not yeah. play the Rangers this year. <laughs> Thank you for looking that up. Sorry, Braden. <laughs> um, wrapping up the Hayward point, like if you look at his career stat line, right? Yeah. If if he were able to just provide that. So a 262 batting average, 344 on base percentage, 756 OPS. If he can provide that, the Cubs have solved their leadoff problem. Because you have somebody who profiles as a more traditional leadoff man, and then you can slot everybody else into the positions that you would rather have them. You can put Schwarber back down into the... What's his OBP? Line. Career. Career, 344. 344. You would take that. You would take that in the leadoff spot. It's, it's the way that, that, that's tough for me to agree to because I'm used to Carpenter having a near 400 or over right. 400. So it's, it's hard, for, hard for me. To do that. I agree, but if you want to slot the rest of your lineup into into roles that make more sense for them, and you want Schwarber in the middle of the lineup, to providing totally some top. Yep. Yep. No, that, that makes sense when you throw the Schwarber equation in there. It, it does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. 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 We, if Schwarber isn't performing or he's not on this team, no, you don't want to put Hayward in there with the, with those kind of numbers. But if yeah. he could, if you could get those kind of numbers out of him, I would gladly take him at the top of the lineup. Yeah, no, completely agree. Completely agree. Um, so, uh, so the next question I had um, was <laughs> spring training. So we're all excited about it the first week, but do we really care? No, and I'm not excited about it the first week. <laughs> I, really don't, I, I don't care I, you know i every year i meticulously go through and i add the schedule including including the broadcast schedule to my calendar so that at any moment i can just pull up the calendar on my phone and i can tell you who the cubs are playing and how we can watch the game i don't add spring training games because they don't matter no they don't matter at all and and i'm not excited about them either I, I totally agree with you 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 might get a game or two where both team both teams have their starters in for an inning and then you don't know who the hell's playing at the end of the game. Um, so, Elliot, sorry, we cut you off. I still I still like listening to the games, even though I don't know half the people who are in there after the third inning. Um, yeah. It's still baseball. I still I still like listening to it. If, if it's on if it's on the radio, I'll listen to it. If it's on TV, I'll watch it. Um, and it's usually once the position players start reporting that I'll actually start paying attention and I'll try and absorb much of it as I can. Yeah. So. You know, what I do kind of like about the spring training. I mean, there's one aspect of it. I do like when um, I know it's changing guys like in a couple of years, but a lot of these Fox sports networks, when they do spring training games, like they cross over. And so you get two different guys in the booths. Um, so you, you know, for instance, if the Cardinals were playing, I don't know, somebody that never play like the Rangers. Um, you would get both Just of those pull announcers. The name out of the hat. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I didn't yes, I did I did say that. Um but it, it, I I that's one small thing there that's that's kind of interesting. But um no spring training, Pete, we were dying last year. I mean, literally in March. We were like, come on, it's yeah. just you know, uh, I get it, you know, they they want to they want to work the young guys and see see what they have, but Really, the back end of these games, what the hell does it really mean? It's really a, it's a, it's a minor league game by the time you're done, right? So, I don't know why they play so many of them. I mean, I think you could probably get rid of two weeks of two weeks of games of spring training yeah. and start the season. I mean, honestly, all right. Do these do these guys need 20, 29, 30 games to get ready for this? You know, for the year. I don't know. All right, guys, I'm going to get on, interesting get on to some uh, some more pithier questions here, okay? <clears throat> these are, may, may, maybe some of these will be a little more fun to answer. Are you, are you feeling pithy? You thumb like up pithy. a bit? <laughs> pithy. pithy? Like, th that was actually uh, Mike Tyson saying pissy. Yes, um, no, that's why I said, are you going to be pithy, you thumb of a bit? The throw the slippery. <laughs> be careful. Um, would you be surprised during spring training if this happened? Fill in the blank. Why? Would you be surprised during spring training if this happened? 
and this is whatever you can think of. So what you're saying is, if this happened, I would be surprised. Yes. Okay. That that would might have been a better way to phrase it. What would surprise you the most? <laughs> Thanks. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you along. Anybody? Okay. Next question. Um, <laughs> what stupid thing will Madden do this year in spring training? Actually, it's um, not Madden who does the stupid things. Come it's, on, it's it Tim is Tim Bus. No, it's Tim Bus. It's Tim Bus. You always have a different answer. Ideas. It's not the one I want to hear. That's not the one any of us want to hear. What will Madden do? That's just ridiculous. This spring training. Come on. He'll he'll bring a python to to the field, and someone's going to get bit. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> Do pythons bite or they just choke people or out? Or squeeze the or they choke do people bite out to hold. Or are those just boa? Yeah. They no, they bite to hold. They both bite to hold. And then they constrict. Pete is our almanac on this podcast, I tell you right now. A little bit. <clears throat> um Rizzo will bring the keyboard and place play music again this year. They'll do okay. karaoke. So you guys really don't have a good response for that, which I'm actually disappointed. Okay, no. Um all right. This year, I would be surprised um, if we revisit the 2016 spring training and Dexter Fowler shows up with <laughs> Theo Epstein having just signed a contract to return to the Cubs. <laughs> yes, and there'd be a handful of fanatical Cardinal fans that would be thrilled about that too. Like, oh, we don't need him. We never needed him in the first place. Um, um, as for what, <laughs> what crazy thing Joe Madden's going to do, um let's see he's already dyed his hair um he's brought a ma various menagerie um to make use, the cubs do a reduction of hamilton use, out on the spring training field no he's going to uh <laughs> here we go he's gonna he's finally gonna work things out with larry david and jeff garland and they're gonna record an episode of curb your enthusiasm in mesa he would he would fit in good for an episode of that show no, he and Jeff Garland are friends. They're trying to get him on the well, show. I don't, I don't care about the facts, yeah. sir. I'm just saying, Joe. I can see Joe Madden showing up on the episode. <laughs> that was my point, Pete. All right, well, keep I don't your care eyes if they're friends or not, but I, I could see him showing up. Keep I could see Joe open. Madden showing up on a, a reunion of Seinfeld just randomly. Keep your eyes open. Okay. Oh, it's going to happen. That'd be amazing. Always going to fit. Um, it would be a good fit. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, T-shirt this spring. What is it? Oh God! Come on, guys. You know I was going to ask this type of stuff. Well, last, Let's go. Last year was going to be the beginning. Last year was that's Cub, right? That was that was that started last year. Yes, that was his T-shirt. He he thought of that. That was Joe. That wasn't right. the other guy you're talking about, Pete. The other guy that's the brain trust, evidently, not Joe no. Madden. Okay. No, 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 no. Tim Bus comes up with the wacky, the wacky uh, uh, activities. Okay. Joe comes up with the stupid thing. <clears throat> hmm. T-shirts yeah. are cooler. So I think uh, it might be the other guy that comes up with that and Joe Madden takes the credit for it, I think. Oh, you think so, huh? Have you seen how Tim Bus dresses for morning stretches? He is not cooler. <laughs> <laughs> he dressed he dress like the Cardinals GM? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you mean you're president. President, you're, sorry, you're president yes. of baseball I know, operations. I know. I, I can't is, separate these things is anymore, a man. Very, he's a very snazzy dresser. I like his sartorial style. You're using big <laughs> words again, man. We don't. We're baseball fans. You can't you can't do that? Do you hear that, Cardinals fans? Ron said you They're don't. They're all getting out there. The source. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> it's not exclusive to Cardinal fans. Um. You got you got you got you got smash people out there in the left field bleachers that have no idea what the hell you're talking about at Wrigley Field. Um, they don't even know they're at Wrigley Field. <laughs> Hold your right. comment. That's okay. a question for later. Okay. Um, uh, you want um you want Joe's motto. Um Yeah, what's his spring training t shirt? What's he what's he what's he doing? We got the biggest nuts. <laughs> That's the best he can come up with. Uh, Elliot, <laughs> repeat if you can. What's his What's his spring training t-shirt? It's it's always something 
short and zen like and um like i mean he would say something like cub zen or something like that or i don't know find your last cub the the, the cubs center yeah okay i could do that um all right so who do you fear won't go north when spring training wraps like of the 40-man roster currently of the cubs you think are gonna are gonna exit spring training and head to chicago who do you fear might not make it? And most likely, we're talking about your young guys. Oh, like who do you want to see? Training, training? Who, who, who might not make it? No, not hurt, but who just doesn't? Who who stays down in, in Iowa and doesn't make it that you want to see? Oh, geez, I don't know that there's anybody who I necessarily want to see this early in that. Well, it, go back to uh, Elliot's earlier answer. It's going to be Victor Caratini. He he clearly deserves a shot. He hit when he made it up to the to the majors, but he needs seasoning behind the plate. Um, yeah. And with with Jimenez being signed and his being a veteran, it's going to be Victor Caratini. Now, is it Jimenez or is it Jimenez? <clears throat> it's Jimenez. All right. Because the joke the joke was <clears throat> it's too bad that his name isn't James, and then they pronounce it Heem so he could be Heem Jimenez. Heem. Instead of Jim Jimenez. Jim Jimenez. All right. I'm going to keep going here. We're out of spring training. Thank God. <laughs> Opening day, starting lineup. Who's in? Who's out? God, oh. who, who's going to be pitching for the Marlins? Well, I mean, <clears throat> you, you, right? we all we all know who's going to be in the infield. I mean, you have Bryant, Russell, Javi, Rizzo. Um, you'll have Contreras behind the plate. You've got Hendricks probably in our Q taking the taking the uh, first start of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, then you're going to have Hayward, Amora Jr., probably Schwarber. First game, I mean, your Enough. first game's in Miami. So, yeah. That is going to be your opening day roster right there. Starting lineup. Starting Pete. lineup. Uh, I... <laughs> In all likelihood, they're going to be facing a righty, and I don't think that uh, Joe's going to want to start Elmora off on on a wrong foot. So I don't think Elmora is in the opening lineup against a righty. I think it, you'll have po- quite possibly uh, Hayward in in center <coughs> and um, and Zobrist in right. Um, but other than that, I agree with the rest of the lineup. Um, and as far as what the or, or the defensive alignment anyway, uh, as far as what the lineup's going to be, here's where I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, I think. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I think that Joe didn't learn from the way that he screwed with the lineup at the beginning of the year last year, so he will continue to do it this year. So, uh, game one, uh, lead off with Chris Bryant, uh, and then uh, and then you'll go um, you go Bryant Rizzo. Um, yeah, you'll you'll it'll be off one, but it'll go Bryant Rizzo. Contreras, Schwarber, Zobrist, um, ooh, Russell, Baez, Hayward, and uh, and Q. As much That's as I don't want to see it, I still think it's going to go Schwarber, Bryant, Rizzo, Contreras, um, probably Russell, Javi, Hayward. And that pitcher. All right. So, who's your, uh, how's the rotation lined up to start the year? One through five Quintana, Hendricks, uh, <coughs> Lester. No, wait, because we're going to sign you. Sorry. Uh, Quintana, Darvish. Lester, really gonna send, you're going to send Darvish to be your second guy. Yeah, because he gets to face the Marlins. Why not? Quintana, Darvish, Lester, Hendricks, and uh, and Chatwood. Okay. Elliot. Rotation. Yeah, I, I, I think you're. If if you is the if Darvish is there, I think it goes Q. I actually think it would go yeah Q, Darvish, Hendricks, Lester, Chatwood.
Okay. More exciting question. That was boring, guys. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you really laughed at that. I thought it was funny. Um, who who will be the Cubs' leadoff hitter on June first? On June first. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. Get you past opening day. Get you past all the what ifs. The experience. It'll be the By best. June first, you're starting to get a little more serious, right? Time you roll around to June, you'll be the best number one hitter ever. It's going to be Anthony Rizzo. Well, June first is a game at the Mets, so I'm going to go with uh, because he's experienced a renaissance. Jason Hayward. Okay. All right. Well, uh, who did you say, Elliot? You said Rizzo. Yeah, the greatest leadoff man in history. Greatest, well, greatest, greatest leadoff man ever. ever. Anthony Rizzo. Right. And better. I, I, the I, could, I mean, I could be ever. right with the way that Mad tinkers <clears throat> with the lineup. I I have a I probably have good odds that Anthony Rizzo could be the starting the number one hitter third baseman on first. How many leadoff hitters in baseball have been first baseman? I wonder. I wonder. I don't know. In baseball history. Um, it was probably more common earlier. Don't count. Don't count my carpenter. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first injury, who do you fear it may be? Like, who's your biggest fear as a Cub fan might go down? Um, not 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 who would shock you, but like you've got a suspicion it might happen. Who who, who are you afraid will go down? Chris Bryant. Uh, okay. I'm I'm tr- I guess I'm trying to figure out how you're trying to frame it. I, I think my biggest well, fear it's just like okay, like of people. Yeah, my biggest fear would like, be like yeah. for me. Let me put in this. Maybe this is a better context for help. me. For, for uh, looking at the Cardinals lineup, my, my biggest concern is Tommy Pham because of his history. Oh, oh, uh, okay. So who do you think? Like who do you think? Like, guy, we really need this guy to play like 140 plus games. Wilson Contreras. Okay. Elliot, you're going to change your opinion, or are you still going to say Chris Bryant? He doesn't have an injury history, does he? No, because he doesn't have an injury history. Uh, Addison Russell. Okay. I mean, um, it, it's not it's not devastating, but having him having him out of the lineup hurts. Okay, so I didn't think I was going to have to hit the explicit key until now, but you guys already took care of that earlier. Um. I'm just going to say this. You guys fill in the blank, okay? It's kind of <laughs> fill in the blank type of thing. You uh, would yeah, shit yourself. You would shit yourself if the injury was to Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, that's exactly where my thoughts were going. Okay. He, the He's guy like the does not of the team, get right? hurt. Yeah. He's it, the captain. It, uh, yeah. It goes, he plays 150 games a year. And he, okay. brings, it, he brings it in all aspects, right? He He's, he's yeah. not just a good hitter. He's a good defensive first baseman and he is absolutely the heart and soul of that team if you lose him for an extended period of time i think that you you can almost say goodbye to the season cubs record mid-year not 41 and 41 <laughs> i hope 103 <laughs> That would be incredible. Did I do um, my math right? Yeah. Yes, totally. No. Totally. You you <laughs> you killed it. No, uh, I'll say um because they got a pretty soft start to the beginning of the season. I'm gonna say uh yeah. ten games over five hundred. Okay. Um, is there uh, oh hold on. Oh, I jumped one ahead. What facet of the Cubs game do you feel needs I can't read. I need to increase the font size of this. Uh, what facet of the Cubs game do you feel will most need to be addressed midseason slash non waiver trade deadline? I guess that depends on who's hurt. If people are hurt, right? A lot um, of factors. What are you suspicious of? Is really probably what we're getting at. Like, what, what are you suspicious of that they'll need to address at that point in time? Um, starting pitching. Yep, I, I have a I have a feeling starting pitching is probably going to. They'll probably go out and get a starter. I mean, uh, based on where you're at today, right? I mean, currently, if nothing else yeah, happens, no, I, yeah, even right? if they sign Darvish, still, you still think I mean, it's a 
potential. Yeah, I think it's I think it's got to be a potential concern. You don't know uh, what Chatwood's going to bring. You know, all of that is projection based on his not being in Coors Field. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, John Lester's getting older. Uh, he by f- easily had his worst season as a Cub last year, um, which wasn't he, terrible. It wasn't terrible, but it was his worst season as a Cub, and he's clearly yeah. aging. Um, yeah, for me, it's starting pitching. And, so, and is there that a wouldn't even necessarily require an injury? It could just be that they determined that that their starting pitching is ineffective and they need to address it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, th- I think I know the answer to this. I think you guys both just answered it, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw the question out there anyway because I m- maybe it's maybe there's a tweak on this in your opinion. But is there a make or break aspect of the Cubs roster that could cause a breakdown or put the season in jeopardy? I think you guys just answered it. Yeah, starting starting pitching. Uh, if you've got if you have say Quintana and Hendricks go down. I mean, if Hendricks goes down for an extended period of time like he did last year, I, I, that hurts you. If you have two starters go down for an extended period of time at the same time, that really hurts you. And with the depth problems that they have at starting pitching and the lack of quality starters in the minors, you don't have you you really don't have anybody up that could fill that void. You would have to go out and find somebody and that that right there unless unless the offense is hitting on all cylinders out the gate and for the entire entire season and you're putting up seven runs a game i just don't see it happening all right so let's let's stick with this theme because i i I would if i had to guess right now i would i would agree with pete and say the cubs will probably be 10 games ish above 500 at the at the midway point so by the time you get closer to the deadline you made no other moves right now. Like if your roster was set as of right now, what do you want to do with the trade deadline? I want to call nine one one and send them to Elliot's house. You all right, man? Yeah. yeah By the way, sorry. we didn't say that. We didn't say this to start the podcast off. Elliot obviously wasn't able to join last week. He was ill, and he is still recovering. And and good on you, man, for joining us tonight on a Tuesday. Which is not a podcast hey, night. It just no. feels wrong, but no. But somehow it feels so right. I, pre- I appreciate dirty. that. It feels dirty tonight, doesn't it? It does feel dirty. Yeah. yeah. It does. You, uh, should, you should get in closer there, Ron. There you it feels, go. It's dirty. <laughs> it feels dirty tonight, baby. Uh, yeah, Ron, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wasn't me- listening. I was, I was mesmerized by your eyes. I hope my son's not listening why don't you ask that question again, <laughs> big sexy? I hope he's not. I hope he's asleep. Um, he's not asleep. <laughs> His the he's, the the, he's the, a, the he, word in front of him right now is why, why dad? What does this mean? <clears throat> he's not Ron. Based on what he just found out, no, he's in bliss right now. Exactly, and oh, you know what? Not, going to be a cardinal so he's jubilant the the flag is at full staff and he just keeps saying oh 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 is not <laughs> with the cardinals anymore oh is gone oh i'm so happy that oh is gone oh <laughs> the office space is thick it's so thick right now um <laughs> All right, so we got we got to keep I got to keep going here, guys. As we start getting closer to October, uh, assuming things will go, the the Cubs are 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 loaded up enough to where I think most of us reasonably consider they're going to be right there at the end of the year. So as we start getting into October, if you if you look at the Dodgers the way they are right now, I know that um, they handled the Cubs pretty well in the NLCS. You know, they 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 basically got on top of them and pinned them. Um, are you are you scared of the Dodgers? Behave. <sighs> but does that team scare you? If you had to face them again yeah. in the playoffs, do they do they do you like worry about it? Yes, if the Cubs still had the same problems plaguing them in 2018 as they did in 2017. But <clears throat> if they play like we've seen them play, then no. With the solidified bullpen and a healthy starting pitching staff, I think that 
No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think they were afraid of him last year. Um, I don't, I don't see being afraid of him this year. I mean, the, the, the Dodgers got on a run last year. They looked great. Their bullpen was nails at the right time. Um, mm-hmm. And they, I just felt like the Cubs ran bullpen. Right. Yeah, I just felt like the Cubs ran into the bud, the buzzsaw at the moment. So, no, I, 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 I'm not afraid of them. I don't think the Cubs should be either. Okay. Pete. Uh, I, I think, that? yeah, I think the Dodgers are an immensely talented team. They are scary. Um, they've got a long lineup. Um, they've got a solid rotation, uh, an unbelievable bullpen, uh, arguably one of the best, if not the best bullpen in the major leagues right now. Um, but they have a problem and they've shown it the last couple of years. Uh, if you can jump out ahead of them, they don't handle pressure well. They didn't handle they didn't handle that NLCS against the Cubs two years ago well when they had the opportunity to put the Cubs away and they couldn't. And the same thing happened with them uh, last year against the Astros. So, um, and and we know from having followed sports for as long as the three of us have, that kind of self doubt creeps up. And if you're unable to nip it in the bud, it. Uh, <laughs> It will, uh, it will drag you down. So it yeah, will. no, I mean, I, think, I agree with you, Pete. I think it, a little bit of this has to be in Kershaw said yeah. that he has not dominated in the postseason ever. Right. So and, it's and, there. and has to be in that team. And you know, you jump out if, if, if you would assume that the Cubs are probably going to face the Dodgers again in the playoffs, if they jump out in game one and, you know, punch them in the mouth and, all of a sudden, the Dodgers are looking at a 1-0 deficit, particularly if they have home field advantage. Mm-hmm. You're going to see a lot of those same doubts creep up, and and I and I think that you know Joe Madden is nothing if not good at playing mind games with the other team's manager, and he definitely has Dave Roberts' number when the pressure's on. All right, he, guys. He, so he just didn't get the he didn't get to play those games with Dave Roberts last year because the Dodgers jumped the Cubs and and the series was over. The Cubs retired. They. Joe got outmanaged by his selection of starting pitching and it was it was over before game one yep. was done. And we've well documented that. We did. On here. Hey, uh, um, break, breaking news. Uh, yep. Charles the Cat said he would absolutely love to come on the show. Outstanding. No kidding. We would love yep. to have Mrs. Epstein on the show. He says he'll let us he'll let us know when he can find some time. Absolutely. Meow, meow baby. Meow. meow. We'll call the episode Meow Meow. Meow Mix. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So as as we're approaching the hour mark here. So we get we gotta we gotta cruise through this. All right, Focus. Let's do it. Of the 40 man roster currently, right now, which Cubs player will not be with the organization in August? Ooh. 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 Okay. You usually don't get a reaction like this out of Pete. When you when you when you've got Pete on a good question, look at him. He lights up. That's a he good one. <laughs> Otherwise, he just you know waves you off like oh, I've thought of this a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my pipe, <laughs> and then I can properly answer. And your and your poetry cap, <laughs> or whatever. I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> I don't know either. I just imagine a guy reading poetry, smoking a pipe. Just that's that's what that's what's happening up here. All right. Not not in a Cubs uniform come August, current 40 man roster. Go. Pete. Oh Justin Graham. Uh, do, yeah. do you need more time? Do you need a time <laughs> we, can, we can pivot to Elliot real quick. No, I actually Elliot, I agree 100%. It's going to be Justin Grimm. <laughs> he made Theo and Jed go to their first arbitration case ever. Okay. Yeah, so I think Justin Grimm. it's going to be Justin Grimm. And 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 I don't think it's going to be for the revenge aspect of it. I think it's because he yeah. just can't harness his talent. He okay. Can't, he can't seem to figure it out. Um, he's got nasty stuff, but he can't command it for more than short stretches of time, and they can't have that in the bullpen. Right. And sometimes when they when they're really relying on him and he seems to be the only one out of the bullpen who can throw it a strike, he'll go in there and he'll give up two bombs. Right. You know. Okay. Um next question, real quick. We're on our hour mark here. All right. 
I think we heard this from Pete last time, but let's just let's just refine this a little bit. If you could light up one group of your own fans, what would you say to them? Go, Elliot. He's one group of he's, hold on, wait, Elliot. Wait, before wait. you talk, before you talk, do you hear like cartridges or, or bullets being loaded into a cartridge right now? Because <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> hold on, I've got to load this. <laughs> All right, wait. Go ahead. Does it sound like that? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, so wait. So the question is, if I could light up some of our own fans, who light would up they one be? group of your fans that that are irritating you, what would you say to them? And it could of be it Cubs could be fans. fans that are physically at the game, fans that are are trolls online. Like, what, what if you could say one <laughs> thing to them? What how, what would you say to them? Like, you know. It, I don't know. I, there's there's a couple of different sets of fans that I thought you're gonna throw up for a second. Would love to, <laughs> so I would love to throw up on some of these fans. Uh, <laughs> some of the online trolls are just freaking ridiculous. You know what? It, all 30 teams have them, so we might as well just rule those out. We all have idiots, right? They're yeah. idiots. Okay. We all okay, have. How about at idiots. the ballpark? At the ballpark, uh, yeah. The, that's that's. Probably where drunk, I want to go. The drunk idiots who spend most of the time on their phone screwing around, not watching the ball game. The, the, these that? are the people that are sitting down front that have the two hundred dollar tickets. That they're the reason why they're two hundred dollar tickets because they're <clears throat> they're paying for them constantly because they have the money, but they're not there for the game. They're there for the good time, and those those tickets could be used for families to go and <clears throat> dads to go with their sons and you know dads to bring their daughters and their families or whatever it's just if you're gonna go to a ball game go to your watch answer, the ball you, game your Elliot, Elliot, your answer was righteous and and so this question I'm, I'm glad you answered it you know why i was really asking this i'm waiting for <laughs> that guy right there yeah. I'm waiting for him right there to tell us what we really I'm want intrigued. I want I want I want I want to hear what Pete has to say. <laughs> Pete. Yes. Go. Hey. Hey you over there at Bricks and Ivy. You're not at the fucking Cubs game. You're across the street. You can't even tell who's on the field. So stop telling people that you're going to a Cubs game cuz you're not. You don't even know that there's a game going on across the street. <laughs> you morons. I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron. Could you repeat the question? I don't think I got it quite. <laughs> I, think you, I think you answered it perfectly. <laughs> nope. You got it, man. I like it. Um, all right. This is – I'm going to go – I, I love it when you toss him softballs around and he just. <laughs> this is this is a better one, Elliot. I don't expect you're, you're going to be kind here. I have a feeling I'm going to. I can't wait to hear this one either. Uh, this is this is probably more for cards rant guy. Um, <laughs> Elliot, we'll just, we'll just start with you because I want Pete to reload his his cartridge. Um, if you could rip a card, man, what would you say? Oh man, I, well, I guess it depends on what I'm arguing with. Come them on, man! About. You got best fans in baseball, the Cardinal way. You got all kinds of shit you can. Come on! Stop being assholes. We get it. You have more World Series wins than we do. Stop freaking throwing that shit in our face. We get it. Guess what? We're better than you right now. Get over but if it. If you have shit to throw, you might as well throw it. Right? Unless you're a Philly fan, then you must eat it. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> my God. You saw that, right? Yes. Horrifying. Perplexing. Elliot, did you see it? No, oh, I missed that. Did you hear was about this it? The, was this Philly? <laughs> was yeah. this after? Was this after the Eagles Eating Super Bowl horse win? droppings on the street? I don't want to hear anybody ever it say wasn't two about Cubs fans. Cup. It was two and horses and, and a Philly fan. It was, it, was, it was actually two horses and a Phillies fan, not two girls in a cup. And it was oh, and it was not it was not cold. 
It was still steaming. <laughs> I think Elliot just threw up. <laughs> he's, got, he's got himself on mute. He had right to now. mute. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> Elliot's given his opinion. Pete, if you can rip Cardinal fans. Remember, uh, guys, I should have framed this up better. Like, not. <clears throat> I don't know what I don't know what you, we, we all classify normal as different, but like level-headed, like realistic people, you're not addressing them. No, you're addressing the idiots, idiot Cardinal fans. What do you say? You That's it. That's it. You hear that? No. All right. Had. See, I'm speaking slowly because they're idiot Cardinals fans, and so you know you have to mm. slow things down so they can understand it. All right. You had nothing to <laughs> do with the <laughs> Cardinals winning a single <laughs> world <laughs> series. Stop acting like a <laughs> prick. This <laughs> is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted you to answer that. Question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I gotta take a piss so bad. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. You did My not. Pleasure. You did not disappoint on that one. Um, all right. A little more serious one. If you could watch, <laughs> this is not this is not a fair pivot. Um, if you could watch a game with one cup player, living or dead, who would it be? Ooh. God, I tell uh, you what. I love listening to Ron Santo yell and groan and moan. And <laughs> like with because no because he was like, such no intellect behind it, it was like pure emotion, right? Like he was he was a he was a commentator, oh, right? On man. the radio. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's like yeah. With, with, with him, like him more, and Pat Hughes with like more like hit the beats type of guys. They'll they'll give commentary on like, well, he did this or that. And like with 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 right. Ron Santo, you got oh, what? Oh God! You know, like <laughs> yeah, he wasn't he wasn't yeah. Hawk Harrelson bad, but I mean, he was he was still I mean, he was entertaining to listen to because you could hear the passion in his voice when something screwed up or something went right and he he would it, you knew he forgot that he was mic'd up and he would just be that fan and cheer so yeah. I, I i think it'd be great to to watch a game with him pete yeah i uh, that actually was my answer too i would want to i'd want to see a game with ron santo and and part of the reason yes absolutely because he's such a huge fan of the cubs um, but also, you know, that you would only have to say a couple of words and he would start talking about his experience uh, playing baseball. And I just I would hope that the game would go into extra innings um, because I think that that you would walk away. And that would be probably one of the most memorable experiences that you would have. Um, you could go to a, to a game with, I think, a lot of other players. Uh, and and certainly you would say years from that, oh, yeah, you know, I, I went to a Cubs game and I actually ended up sitting next to Ryan Sandberg and it was a great time when we talked. I think that going to a game with Ron Santo, you would remember every moment of it. And I think that that would be, that would be the really cool part of that experience. All right, gents. That was, uh, I, I think that was one of our best shows ever, to be honest <laughs> with you. I don't know how you feel, Pete. We've done a lot of these together, but... Uh, um, that was uh, that was pretty good. I'll, I'll pat myself on the back for that one. All right, good job. Yeah, well, it was good. All right, I'm out of questions, guys. That was it. 
Stop All right. In. Very nice. So, so then I'm just going to turn it around on you very quickly. Yeah. What is your nightmare scenario for the Cubs season as a Cardinals fan? You mean the Cubs? Hold on. So his so, fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my fantasy of what would go wrong with the Cubs. No, 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 no. Your nightmares. No, no, no. Your well, nightmares. What is, be for Friday. What, what is the absolute <clears throat> worst possible outcome for you as a Cardinals fan? Okay. For the Cubs. So in other words. Oh, oh, right. for, okay. I'll, the I'll Cubs, tell you this. 20 games this, above 500. No, at this is a, no, 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 guys, <laughs> guys, guys, this is an easy thing for me to answer. So, so, okay. You got the, you got the sense of what I'm asking. All right, go. That Kyle Schwarber lives up to the hype. That guy scares me more than anybody on your team. And I know you guys know I have, I, I love Chris Bryant. And if I could trade for him right now, I would, I trade the whole triple A organization. Um, you take give him, him over. You take him over Nolan Arredondo. I think because well, they're, they're both good young players. I just think that Bryant now as a as a pure third baseman, P, if you say you know you got to keep him there forever. Um, but I think Bryant is just going to be rock solid for a very very long time. I think he's a level headed kid who's who's. I don't think I don't see him as having peaks and valleys. I think he's going to be steady Eddie for like the next fifteen years. And so he's probably the one player I would love to have. The one I'm most scared of is Schwarber because if he ever f figures it out, gets consistent, like add his potential, like consistent potential on top of that lineup, like shit. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what to do at that point. That's my nightmare scenario. It's not Hayward figuring out how to bat 265 again. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 Schwarber batting no shit like <clears throat> two ninety and hitting like forty eight home runs. And and tell me, is that because um because because of the the additional the 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 trickle down effect that would have on the Cubs lineup and 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 by Twitter extension feed. their win totals or 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 it's or, Twitter feed Pete Twitter feed I know okay. Is that because it would help the Cubs be good for an extended period of time? Or is it because you would be inundated with Schwarber, the last Jedi gifts? It would <laughs> now until it's yes, finished. yes. And Cubs fans, bad. every Cubs fan wearing a Schwarber jersey from unbearable, now on 2038. unbearable that Jesus Christ came back <laughs> and Kyle Schwarber. Yes, it would be unbearable, just horrible. Like, yes, the last Jedi. Yes, he's Jesus Christ. No, he's Santa Claus. I mean, everything like God <laughs> sent him to us. It would just it just be because the Cub fans that don't know enough, like the ones you were describing earlier, wouldn't know how to handle it, and it would just be just awful to put up with. Oh, I just, I just thought of the graphic. See, somebody, I bet somebody's already made this. Yeah. Given his workout regime this off season, Kyle Schwarber is. Patrick Swayze, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. That doesn't that doesn't offend me as much as throwing the Jedi. You away. run it up the flag and salute, soldier. Yeah, I'll run something up the flag and salute. Oh, I don't know. I I, I get pretty excited pretty excited thinking about Kyle Schwarber Jedi robes. He Ride doesn't rate he doesn't rate Jedi robes, man. He he deserves no <laughs> part of it. He deserves not to be mentioned. Never. Maybe all black. Oh, oh yeah. Arch Schwarber. He, he deserves... I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll give Schwarber this in regards to the force ability. I'll give him gold robes. Because I hope he gets <laughs> cut in half next year. <laughs> By his own teammates. Face their true enemy. Yeah. Tongue hanging out. <laughs> when you left know, left hand still on. You know, left hand still on the, the Gatorade cooler. You know, Elliot. Yeah. When, when Ron first found Kyle Schwarber, <laughs> he was a big, fat he Babe Ruth Lucas, <laughs> John Crook like him with <laughs> such raw power. <laughs> oh man! But we to wrap this up. <laughs> And with that, <laughs> and Instagram with that. and Facebook, you can find everything Team Arrivals related on teamarrivalspodcast.com. 
You can contact us at the show at teamarrivalspodcast.com. And obviously, like, rate, review, subscribe, follow on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Spotify. And for those of you watching us live on YouTube. That's right. right. We love you all. Thanks, thanks for letting me cough in your ear tonight. I hey, man. That. Anytime, anytime. Guys, it's been a hell of a lot of fun tonight. I know we <clears throat> Cubs content the whole time, but uh, it was it was good to hear your thoughts your your thoughts exclusively on the Cubs. We didn't have to get distracted by anything else tonight, but Friday night except some long O, <clears throat> except my son's <laughs> call on some long O, which was I I, I love that. Um, but uh, Friday we're going to turn the tables a little bit. We're going to be talking nothing uh, but Cardinals, and uh, we have special guest joining us, and so I'm looking forward to that too. Being an exciting Gentlemen. exciting night, and we we almost sold you short. Somebody wants to contact Elliot on Twitter, they can do so at T O R underscore Elliot. Let him know how you feel. Yeah. All right, guys. At me, bro. We'll do this again in a few nights. All right. Rock on. Sounds good. Hang on. Nope. Hold on. Wasn't nope. cute up yet. I might be ready for Not a bear bite then. Might be ready for what? I might be ready for Scotch. a beer by then. Scotch. Oh, you haven't had you haven't whiskey. had a drop yet, huh? All right. No whiskey. Though, that's since that'll clear that weekend before. Right yeah. Um, on, I didn't have... give you enough. Of okay, a I'm ready now. Play. <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> Do not edit this. I won't. We'll fix it oh. in post. No, I don't want to fix it in post, man. I just want to cut the end in front off. Please don't. What are you doing? Good night, everybody. Are we done? I, you're the one who's controlling the sound. I just okay. I didn't want to upset the apple cart. All right, guys. Hey, we'll do this in a few nights. Everyone, love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye. We didn't talk about Jake. We did earlier. No, we didn't. Yeah. Hold on. When when did we Jake talk about State Farm? Jake. No, Jake Elliott. Oh man, we didn't. Uh, My alum who scored eleven points in the Super Bowl opened and closed the score. We should have started with that, man. I know. That's all right. No big deal. He had himself. So he went to your high school or he went to the high school, school that I work at. He went to the high school I work at. Oh, nice. Guys, that was that, that was a good show. I like that. Yeah, it was. I agree. Hey, I was serious. I said it was man, one of the best ones. I agree. Hey, take us off live so that I can be arrogant. Oh crap. I didn't do that. I'm still I'm I'm still kind of sweating from laughing so hard.